scooped up. Alright, and then you get a blue gem every time you beat a boss. Which upgrades Johnson gives you a different it gives you a new gun and then when you collect all the guns it gives you upgrades. Shove it into my face, G. Trust me, it doesn't mean we're engaged or anything. Might be a tight fit, but okay. All right, blue gems, and oh, they got packaged people, like Easter baskets. What exactly did that do? Blue gems let me transform into new tools of war, new gears of me. In other words, a new weapon, magnifico. You know, I bet all the VIPs are walking around with blue gem. Hmm. All right, so let's uh, read what this says. <clears throat> to move this computer thing out of the way. Johnson can now transform into the Teether! The Teether is fast. Machine gun able to shoot Demon Teether at a high rate of fire. While holding aim, hold the fire button and enjoy! This is actually my favorite weapon in the game. The Teether. Because uh, when you upgrade it, uh, well, when you get to, when you get more blue gems, it upgrades to, like, the Mega Teether 3000 or some shit. And it has, like, nine, like, little holes in it. Like, you know how you only shoot, there's only one laser, right? It then has like nine lasers and they lock on and you just be tearing up squeezing and cheesing spraying and praying baby that's all I do there's enemies down there let's do this and just start tearing up down the hallway cuz it's fun <laughs> cannibal carnival we are now at act 2-3 what a wonderful world. <laughs> well, later on you meet like a merchant. I guess that could be compared to Resident Evil 4 also. But over the shoulder camera. With a laser. And a merchant. Someone you buy items from. Whatever. Whatever, people can say whatever they want. This game's still fucking awesome. I love it. I've beat it three times. I've watched people beat it. Love this game. And you just picked her up out of the rubbish and brought her home? Why not? Sometimes I think I hardly know you. What was that? I don't know, but we've got company. Oh yeah, let's test out that teether. Mm, get squeezed on. Get squeezed on. You want some more? Get squeezed. We'll cover you. Woo hoo! You too swole. You want some more, bitch? Get them legs squeezed. Up. Get, get. Are you afraid of the light? Come on, come get. Oh, something hit by it. Oh, he's not dead. That's that's cool. It worked out. Get worked out. No, oh, get out of the light. that shit too bitch I love this gun <laughs> get it get it oh <laughs> oh man oh it's so fun but uh yeah the teether is usually what I upload next after everything goes to the hot boner hot boner um also uh once I get an upgrade that's creepy uh, once you get it all the way upgraded, that's when I put up the capacity so I could just be squeezing for days. So this is another funny part, where uh, whenever you find these books, they tell you the story of the boss you just fight. Like, how he... Why he, uh... You know, is a VIP, so let's read it. It's pretty funny. The man who never had his fill. It was a cold and snowy eve. Certainly no night for a man without a home to be walking these grey and endless streets. Inside the pizza parlor... George Reed spun a lively tune on his harmonica. The local children giggled and pointed excitedly at the harmonica man as their parents glowed with approval. His reward would be all the pizza he could eat, six pies at least, and a warm bed in one of these folks' homes. He knew they were good for it. Next page. But when he tucked in for the night, George had not had his fill.
As the years and calories stacked up, most men would have got older and fatter. Yet for all he consumed, George only got thinner as he washed from town to town. Tapeworm. Tonight, he plied his trade with some grannies and orderlies in a nursing home. hoo -ha! His harmonica filled the room with joy. After devouring three helpings of pork chops and mashed potatoes, <laughs> that he boy was bawling. The, of the old woman next to him. Juice dribbled down his chin. Go ahead, Georgie, she said. You're such a good boy, you shouldn't have to starve. But George had not had his fill. Early the next morning, he was already on the freeway with his thumb in the air. Where are you headed? said the man in the truck. Nowhere, said George. Anywhere. It was a new decade, and tonight George played to an all but empty bar in the city. He had lost a lot of weight. Afterwards, the only woman in the joint took the stool next to him and asked him his name. The bartender leaned over the counter. You don't know this guy, Mary. George is famous, being all over the tri-state area. With a wink, he added, man's insatiable. <laughs> Trying to get him some ass. And that night, George proved it as he buried his face in Mary's beaver. Oh, that's gross. Holy woodland creatures. Had a boy, George. Had a boy, George. <laughs> Had a boy. Go, George. She purred. But even after five trips to heaven and back, he had not had his fill. The morning after was an awkward affair as they stared at each other over coffee. One wanted to feel more, the other just wanted to feel. In his final days, George was all skin and bones. I can relate, except for the skin part. His last meal had been a mistake. It was on a sidewalk one night in a small suburban town that he came across the boy. Hungrily, and with an agonized grimace, he opened his mouth to beg for help. Out came a cacophony of wheezes and toots, but the boy understood. Wait, you mean Jorge ate his harmonica? Once he was alone, George Reed looked at the candy bar he held in one hand and began to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so he mistakenly ate his harmonica instead of the candy bar he had. That sucks. They found George's half-eaten body in a market next town over. In one hand, he held a knife. In the other, a fork. Chunks of flesh had been torn from his chest and his arms. Blood framed an eerie smile. The wind that morning blew fierce, and as it whistled through the hole he'd carved out of his own neck, the harmonica man played his last song in this world. There were gawkers, and many knew him. They shared stories of how he'd filled them with hope, filled them with life. They, at least, had had their fill. <clears throat> Especially Mary. The end. <laughs> Especially Mary. See how cool that was? Yeah. I wish I... Well, I probably could. I would totally read storybooks like that. So that's the story of the first boss we fought. Uh... He had a tapeworm, I guess, in his stomach that was keeping him from eating. And <laughs> he was eating everything, even ass and beavers. And ended up eating himself. Depressing. So those annoying ass things shoot them goats. And then you gotta shoot him back out. And then he's gonna try to bring his dusty ass back up there again. And that's when you shoot him down. Fuck it. Creeping ass bastard. God, I hate how they just so squirrely. What do you want, baby? Strawberry. So let's go find one. I just came that way. Oh! No. Bad. Yeah, bitch. Was the kind you bust a cap in those mother fudges before they douse the lights? Oh, stop being so ow. Oh, get down. Oh, I would have to reload, wouldn't I? Oh, I didn't forget about you. 